Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and uh, I'm going to move a little bit away from British politics just for a moment. Have a little gaze westwards where President Donald Trump has had a very, very bad week. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, um, a couple of blows from the Supreme Court and a bit of a message left outside Trump Tower. So I'm going to start off with that one first. So I woke up this morning to the news that Donald Trump uh, is going to be seeing a bit of a message. A message he doesn't really like. He doesn't like the Black Lives Matter protest group, uh, or what they stand for. He, he, he said that, you know, it's not a sign that's, that's worthy of attention. So the good people of New York, and I don't mean random acts of vandalism here. I mean the authorities of New York City have got officials, uh, volunteers, even the mayor of New York to go out and paint in large yellow letters along the street outside of Trump Towers, Black Lives Matter, uh, as a message to him that uh, he can't ignore. But on to more, see, I mean, that will just annoy him. Anything that annoys him is, is quite good. And I know some people may think you're annoying the person with his finger on the nuclear button. There's no such thing as the nuclear button. Um, so that's fine. But um, in more you know, serious news for him personally. Now, one of them was a definite defeat in the Supreme Court. The other one, I think, was just heading something off, was not necessarily a direct defeat for, for Trump. So I'll, I'll cover that one because someone was saying last week to me, about Donald Trump, you know, if he loses the presidential election this November, which is only a few months away now, then, uh, and there's a bit of a worry about that as well, because although you'd look at the situation, you think, you know, Joe Biden is on course for beating Donald Trump, not just in terms of the number of votes, the proportion of the country, because that is meaningless. It's just as meaningless as in the UK, because you have a first past the post type system in America as well with the electoral colleges, which is relevant to the other Supreme Courts. Uh, Supreme Court case. But, um, you know, just when you break it down state by state, it's looking like a Joe Biden victory. Downside to that is it's always very worrying for a front runner because people are fundamentally quite lazy when it comes to voting. And, and if they just think, you know, they can't be bothered, oh, so and so is going to win anyway, there's no point, then you can end up with a lot of people who would have voted for Joe Biden not going at all and Donald Trump wins again because a load of people, just like in 2016, didn't bother to vote, except in 2016, it could be argued, a lot of them didn't bother to vote because they didn't like either. Well, that may still be true now, um, but you'd have thought the ones who really didn't want Trump as president would go, uh, well, let's make sure he definitely doesn't win this time. So let's say Trump loses. Now, of course, he would absolutely want to retain power. This is what people are saying to me. He's going to want to do whatever he can to stay as president. Yes, absolutely. Um, because the narrative is this. Now, there are things, I keep trying to imagine the things he could do, but I don't understand, you know, uh, the American constitutional issues, legal issues, political issues, as well as I do British ones. Because the, the, the trajectory is as follows. So Donald Trump loses in November, but he's still president because they have this mad system where for two and a half months he's still president. And at the end of that time, he can expect a knock on his door from the FBI to arrest him uh, in regards to the Mueller investigation, which although he says he won it, <laughs> that was his words, he won the Mueller report or the Mueller investigation, uh, he did not... Uh, he was told, and everyone was told, Congress was told quite clearly the reason why Mueller hadn't arrested Donald Trump is because he's the sitting president. And when he was asked, you know, so, well, in a roundabout way, the second he's not the sitting president, would, be under, would he be under arrest? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Donald Trump doesn't really want to be arrested, particularly for something he's banged to rights on. So no surprise to me that he will do whatever he can. Now, one suggestion that was coming out uh, of American people telling me about was this concept. That, so the way it works is people vote on the state by, and each state has so many electors for the electoral college, and then they cast their votes in accordance with the way people voted. But it doesn't always work like that because you always get a few rogue electors who just cast their vote according to what they want and they ignore the will of the people, so to speak. 
but it hasn't actually made a difference before. But what people have suggested is that if a lot of electors could be persuaded to still back Trump and that they might do that, then he could still become president. So to head this off, um, you know, the Supreme Court have now, you know, cases brought before them and they have basically said that in actual fact, electors can be required by the state that they represent to cast their ballot for the candidate who won the state's popular vote. So no circumventing the convention of the way the electoral college procedure works there. And there were people, you know, there was a suggestion, oh, if you look at the original constitution, it sort of allowed for this. And the Supreme Court said, well, in fact, the quote from one of the justices was Article 2 of the Constitution and the 12th Amendment, because obviously the Constitution has been amended, gives states broad powers over electors and gives electors themselves no rights. So the bottom line is that if enough states vote for Biden um, and, and the electors you know, were to go along with that, then it would mean Biden would be president. There'd be no jiggery pokery there. Now, quite what happens if electors wish to test the waters and just vote for Trump anyway, and, and you know, and the legal wrangling that will come from that, I don't know. But you know, and the Supreme Court have basically said no, you you you, you don't get to do that. You don't get to do that, and that was unanimous as well. That was unanimous. So that should scotch that one. It doesn't necessarily stop the... I don't know what happens. Is it an immediate annulment of any elector who doesn't use their vote correctly? Or does it have to go through the court system? I don't know. But like I say, yeah, I mean, that's where maybe this two and a half month lead into the next president anyway would, would work for that. And you'd presumably prioritise such a case. But then there was the real defeat for Trump this week. The one that's got him hopping mad yesterday. Hopping mad. So, his tax returns. Now, a lot of presidents basically are supposed to publish their tax returns to, and you know, uh, and they're supposed to recruit themselves from their business interests as well. So there's no conflict of interest. And by publishing their tax returns, they can demonstrate that there's no conflict of interest with the decisions they make. Now, we know absolutely there's been massive conflicts of interest with Trump as he's you know, had money pouring into his businesses as he's carried out, you know, government business on his own properties as a hotelier, basically. Um, so, yeah, and the other thing, the other suggestion is as well that Trump is not as wealthy as he makes out and his tax returns would demonstrate that as well and that would prick his ego. So people want his tax returns, not least of which, it's not just the, the you know, the, the principle of the matter, you know, the fact that he could have actually broken the law as well. Um, and so, you know, various people have tried to get those tax returns. So Congress have tried to get them, as well as there's a bit of a prosecution case going on in New York. So New York prosecutors have tried to get them. And Donald Trump has refused. In fact, Donald Trump, in terms of the New York prosecution, has said that he's the president. So he's above the law. In fact, you shouldn't even be investigating me because I'm the president. As He seems to misunderstand words. He seems to think president means king. No, you don't have a king in America. But um, the Supreme Court now said, now they did sort of say that Congress can't have them, or at least not yet. I, th I don't know whether that's a holding position or a permanent one, but Congress are not going to be able to get them right now. However, the Supreme also, the Supreme Court, sorry, also did say by seven to two. Now, also, I need to emphasise at this point, the Supreme Court is, of course, very partisan, but it has a majority of Republicans in it. Five to four, isn't it? Republicans, to Democrats. Seven to two said that Donald Trump does not get to use his presidency as an excuse for ignoring a subpoena. So, in actual fact, if he's required to hand them over uh, as a result of, of of a court order then he will have to do so or, or rather his status as president doesn't stop that now that doesn't and that was voted seven to two so at least three republican leaning justices sided with justice <laughs> for once uh, i say for once that's not fair um but that doesn't necessarily mean he's got to now hand them over 
you know, his his lawyer was was talking up very big, and his lawyer was basically saying, "Okay, well, that's fine. We'll now argue it in the court because the, you know, uh, this is going through the courts, and and he they can still make arguments that he shouldn't have to hand it over. The Supreme Court hasn't said he has to hand them over. They've okay. just said you don't get to say you don't have to hand them over because you're the president. But if he's got some other legal way of saying he doesn't have to hand them over, well, that's for the courts to decide." And court cases take a long time. They don't take any less time in America than they do in, the, in Britain, for example. So we're not going to see, as far as I understand it, from rather more native uh, American commentators, we're not going to see them before the election. So what it could just well mean is that unless Trump can do something very, very cunning if he does lose the election, and I've no doubt at all he will absolutely try and weaponize his supporters. I, I have zero doubt about that. He will absolutely rile them up. We know how that's going. He's already been doing it, you know, going on about witch hunts and all the rest of it. Um, there's going to be a lot of blood on his hands. But at the same time, he will still not be president in by the end of January uh, if he loses the, the presidential election. And in that particular case, you know, unless he can do something I like, you know, admits to everything in the Mueller report and then step down and and Pence pardons him. I don't know, you know, whether that's a thing. But unless he does something cunning, he can expect not only a knock on the door from the FBI, but also at some point you would think those New York prosecutors are going to finally uh, get the court order that says hand those tax returns over. We want them now. Thank you. But of course, that would be presumably next year. So that's the situation there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hope you find the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.